I'm making a series of videos addressing all the comments I get on my channel uh, as well as on uh, the Facebook groups. Tend to get a lot of comments and uh, well, a lot of them are based on what other, what people read on Facebook or wherever on social media. I think what some people don't realize is that they, uh, you'll read an article about an electricity car and you kind of have to pay attention to the year of the article and whether or not it says sponsored on the article. Because usually if it says sponsored, it's going to be biased one way or another. If it's saying good things about electric cars, well, that article is probably written by somebody that has interest in it, a vested interest in it. Um, if it says bad things, well, <laughs> it could be, uh, it could be Saudi Arabia writing the article. You don't know, right? <laughs> so... I think the best way to get information, if you want to know anything about these things, is to talk to somebody that has one. Uh, I can give an unbiased opinion. I have more, I have more gas and diesel cars than I do electric. I got one electric car and oh, 20 some odd gas and diesel vehicles. So I, I have nothing to gain from lying to you about electric cars but anyways with that said uh, the most popular or unpopular thing about these things is people ask me all the time what about the battery it's kind of a vague question uh, yeah it's got a battery uh, another one is oh, how much is a battery I don't know never, never bought one Ask me in a couple hundred thousand kilometers and I'll let you know. Even if I have to buy one then. Okay, so yes, it has a battery. This one here has a... It's a long range, so it's kind of a bigger battery. It's the, main, the main things in this thing would be the battery and the two electric motors. One in the front and one in the back. Not all of them have two motors, but... Uh, because this has two motors, the battery's bigger. Battery sits in the floor pan, takes up most of the floor underneath the car. People think you can't drive them in the rain. <laughs> There's all sorts of things people think, but the rain, nothing hurts it. So now I don't really worry too much about the battery. I mean, it's always on my mind, yes. Because basically this is kind of more like an appliance than it is a car which is a good thing and a bad thing appliances you just use them and you don't think about them well because there's a lot that you don't have to think about the battery and the electric motors have a pretty good warranty better than well if you look at the battery as and the motors as the drivetrain uh, and then you look at the warranty of the drivetrain on this as compared to the warranty of the drivetrain on a gas or diesel vehicle. The warranty on this is 120,000 miles or eight years, whatever comes first. And that is on the electric motors and the battery. So you look at the drivetrain on a regular vehicle and there's a lot of parts in there and they're not warranted for that long. So that is kind of a win for the electric car, I'd say. And even if you do have a problem with the battery, say after 119,000 miles, you have a problem with the battery or 191,900 kilometers. Do you have a problem with the battery? If that battery is anything more than 30% depleted, that's when they fix it for free.
So as for the next question that I get, how much is a battery? Like I said earlier, I have no clue. Uh, your guess would be as good as mine. I would say expensive, but you don't really have to worry about it for quite some time. And then you just, if you factor in how much money you've saved on fuel in that time, well, that's gonna buy you more than one battery. Like I said earlier, this is all just my experience. And I should once again say that if you can't charge it at home, don't buy one. That's, I, I wouldn't buy one if I couldn't charge it at home. And yes, the other day it did cost me some money. It cost me uh, $4 to fill up the uh, windshield washer fluid. And of course a bit bigger hydro bill, but not much bigger. You'll also get a lot of people that say they don't work in the cold. <laughs> Those are all these people that don't own them. <laughs> I, uh, I live in BC. It's cold here in the winter. It works fine. Works better than a gas car for me. I'll go 100 kilometers. I'll charge it up to 80%. I'll go 100 kilometers. Go shopping for an hour. Uh, when I'm in the shopping center, I'll leave the heat on for that hour in the car. Come home, leave the heat on all the way home, all the way there, blasting. And I'll get home with like 40% when I left here with 80. So, I'm, I mean, it's... You can use the heat as much as you want. Whereas with a gas car, you're not gonna leave it sitting in a parking lot running for an hour. Well, this, it just doesn't matter. Another concern I hear a lot is, uh, what about those, uh, what about all those little kids in the Congo that are dying getting the cobalt for the batteries? Well, yeah, this, this thing has, uh, Almost 3% of the battery is cobalt. And I believe now they're up to 96% approximately of the batteries are recycled now. There's a, a place in Arizona that's doing it. So there's that. There's also, uh, were, were these people concerned about cobalt before there was electric cars? Because uh, the paint in your house, uh, Radial tires, airbags, all the computers, all the rechargeable batteries. Uh, I mean, cobalt is all around you. <laughs> so, kind of odd that now people are concerned about it now that there's electric cars. And the electric cars, now they're, they're, they're working on getting less and less in the batteries. So, I mean, eventually there will be something else in them. But also, if those people are so concerned about... Uh, the cobalt in the batteries are, are they sending those children money so that they won't work in the mines uh also yeah <laughs> actually i watched i watched a video about it and it's not like you would picture it's not like these kids are out working in the mines a lot of them are working in their living rooms digging holes with their families uh in their front yards all over the place with their families now you send them 20 bucks or 50 bucks and what do you think they're going to be doing the next day? That's right, they'll be still doing what they're doing because that's the only way they can get money. And if you want to take that money away from them, take that job away from them, uh, what are they going to eat? They're still going to do it. If people are really concerned, why not send them uh, breathing apparatuses so that they, uh, cobalt's a heavy metal and what it is, it's, uh, it's a causes respiratory illness not that car exhaust if you ever look at the cities that's not cotton candy floating over the city that's car exhaust and people with respiratory problems that's not good for them either so I mean there's arguments for either way. I didn't buy this to save the planet and I don't think 
I don't think too many people do buy their vehicles to save the planet or for political reasons. <laughs> uh, people buy their vehicles because they buy what they want. That's all. As for charging the battery, mine's always charged at home, but I have on occasion went to a supercharger. I went, I think, three times. I didn't have to either time. Uh, it was just paranoia when I first got the car, but <laughs> I get a lot of comments, people saying, well, I don't have six hours to sit there and charge my car. Well, <laughs> what are you doing for six hours? Because the longest I've sat at a charger is 20 minutes and that gets you a couple hundred miles. This is a lot like a car. You don't have to fill it up. It's, and the first, like from 20 to 80% fill, it takes no time at all. It's that topping it up. It's like from 80 to 100. Well, that takes a long time, probably a half hour or more. But you don't have to fill it that full. Just fill it a little bit. Fill it for, put 200 miles in it and stop again for 15, 20 minutes if you have to. Uh, most people don't drive that much. I mean, I never need to. I can drive. Leave here early in the morning, drive all day, go shopping, leave the air conditioning on, leave the heat on while shopping, uh, leave the surveillance on. The surveillance takes a fair fair bit too. It takes about 1% an hour of my charge. It's running, uh, there's nine cameras. It's running eight cameras basically all the time. So yeah, that takes a little bit, but even that, no biggie. Yeah, so as, as far as the battery goes, yeah, I'm sure you, you could end up buying a $20,000 or whatever they cost battery. But from what I've seen, nine times out of ten, it's a small problem with the battery. Maybe a couple of cells are imbalanced or whatever. And yeah, it still costs, you know, maybe 7000 or whatever. But it's fixed, it's warranted, so whatever. Although it might seem like I'm being biased towards the car right now. Well, I kind of probably am. I like it right now. Uh, who knows? Maybe next video it'll break down and I'll hate it. <laughs> I don't know. I never actually do too good of a job washing it because I wash it so often. See now, is there any other battery questions I get? Oh, I get, uh, well, what happens if the power goes out? Well, for one, this is always charged fully. As soon as I get home, I plug it in, so a couple hours later, it's fully charged again. It's, uh, if it's not fully charged, it's three quarters or more. And then again, if the power goes out and you have a gas car up here, the gas station has no power either, so they're not going to be able to pump your gas anyways. But, this is filled when I leave the house. Uh, any of my other vehicles, I have to fill up before I come home to the house, and then go back again. So it's, all my other vehicles are only like three quarters full when they're at the house. This is totally full. So, And the new one, the 2023, uh, or 2024 coming out exactly like this it gets a hundred and some odd more miles on a charge it's up over 400 miles now which is comparable to a normal car well not normal gas car <laughs> i guess that's pretty well it for the battery except one thing i should mention there is a regular battery as well it like a car battery um and they last like a car battery lasts, so yeah, you do have to change them every five years or whatever. But they are just a standard battery, so I mean, there's no huge expense to changing that. I do understand why a lot of people are leery about buying one of these type of things. Because, yeah, it is kind of just a appliance on wheels. And they are relatively expensive. I think the 
the new one that just came out in the states it starts around forty thousand. they're constantly coming out with other electric cars now as well but uh i just wanted to stick with the one that's been making them the longest and the fact that these ones get updated over the air uh it's cool to come into your car and have it do something different every once in a while i will be making a video about uh, some of the bad things i'm just waiting for more of the bad things to uh, start surfacing before i make a video one of the bad things is cleaning the bugs off the front it's nice when i used to have radiators to get all the bugs in them and then that way i didn't have to clean them off another thing people seem to think is that they think it's a lot like a flashlight. You know, when you put new Duracells in a flashlight and it slowly goes dead? These don't do that. They don't slowly run out of power. Or the lights don't slowly dim or nothing like that. 